Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about Abacus scripting and I'm going to show you a, a demo or a tutorial on how to do scripting in Abacus. So the method that I've learned, I've learned it from the article set um, named um, Learn Abacus Script in One Hour and uh, the website that, the, uh, that you can see here, the author gave lots of information and also files on how he did it. By watching this video, I hope that you can learn it uh, much faster, basically by the length of this video and uh, less than one hour. And for, to download all the files that I'm creating right now, um, you can take a look at my website or email me um, to, so that I can send you the files. So in order to show you the example, I'm going to um, basically simulate a simple disk compression test. Uh, the height of the specimens are going to be 15 millimeter and the diameter of them is going to be 10 millimeter. Uh, we are going to reduce the height by 50%. So we are going to apply nominal strain of 0.5 and the constant coefficient of friction is going to be used. It's going to be 0, 0.1 uh, at the top and bottom surfaces. So we assume that the specimen surfaces are going to be lubricated and uh, in order to see basically the benefit, benefit of doing this test, you can take a look at any of my articles between 2011 and 2014. So let's go and create the model together. After opening Abacus, what I usually do is that I usually save the model, uh, save the empty file and assign it a name like example. And if you open this uh, folder, the folder that you had the example file, you can see that you have an example.cae file and also an example.journal uh, file. We are interested in this journal file. So this is an empty journal file you can see here that was created. But before continuing to do any scripting, take a look at here. Uh, we have a command section, kernel of a, a command section. We need to ha um, copy and paste the line. This is my um, basically cheat file. Okay, so I'm copying this line here um, to here. Then, and what it does is basically it is changing the environment of Abacus so that the coordinate system is used as the selection um, selection of anything. So when I create the model, it's going to use the coordinate uh, system in order to trace back the location. And it's going to use find that. Don't uh, concern about it too much, but you're going to see the benefit of it uh, soon. And if I save the model again here, you can see that nothing is added to the, um, to the journal file. So you don't see the effect of it in your script, but it has an uh, importance effect in your uh, scripting basically. So I'm creating the um, specimens and also the top and bottom surfaces. The specimen is going to be deformable and solid and I'm going to use revolution to create it. And I'm going to use 0, 0 as the initial point, 5 and 15 as the other point. So if you take, if you take a look at it, you can see that the radius is going to be 15 and also the uh, height of it is going to be uh, 5 and the height of it is going to be 15. I could use symmetry, but for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm not using symmetry. So 360 degree of revolution is what I need. And also I need to create the surfaces, which is going to be discrete rigid shell revolution. And uh, it's going to be zero, zero point to something like 7.5 and zero. And again, I'm going to uh, basically revolute it 360 degree and assign a reference point to it. So uh, the part is created. I want to see uh, basically if anything is changed in my journal file. Now nothing is changed, but once I save this part, save this model, I can see that basically lots of lines is added and this is the part that the material uh, the, the model is created the part is created by manipulating some information inside this you can change these parameters and uh, basically ha have uh, this python script uh, look at other python file to read the values and change these parameters accordingly so for example the angle of uh, revolution is 360 you can see here and here so by changing it to 90 you can use symmetry 
but if you use symmetry some parts and some information in the, the further uh, part of our analysis might be changed so you need to be careful about changing all these parameters or your model doesn't work so uh, take a look at this but you don't need to necessarily understand all of it but many of the information can be uh, basically um, very simple to you after you work with it um, for a while so now I want to mesh the specimen and also the uh, surfaces. In order to mesh, I prefer to use structural mesh. So I'm going to cut this specimen, um, this piece, um, in two ways. Uh, the other way uh, is that basically I need to have, uh, where is it? Yeah. I want to rotate this line along this axis so that I have <clears throat> two other points I think I have another points that I want right now I want to cut these two pieces from this point to this point okay so now uh, this one was supposed to just be meshed by free mesh but I prefer to use a structured mesh so now I can do it I want to change it to one, the global size of the mesh to one, and mesh it. The specimen, again, I want to mesh it, but I need to, again, cut it. In order to cut it, I prefer to use datum planes. So here, here, and here. I'm using three points to make a datum plane. And I want to rotate that this datum plane along the y-axis. 90 degree so now I have two datum planes and I can cut the specimen through these datum planes so this is the datum plane that I want the specimen to be cut and also again the whole model should be selected and this datum plane should be selected now I can use basically the structured mesh and again I want to have the global size of one uh, okay yeah that's it now uh, again I can save it take a look at the file see it goes through line 127 something and the mesh is gener generated these values that you can see here are the points that I use some of them some of them are the uh, information about the data planes so you cannot change these ones uh, on, uh, or you, you may have some errors but some values like um, where is it like um, the one that I just assigned instead of the arbitrary number, uh, yeah, this is the size. So in, in this line that I'm selecting right now, you can see that the size of mesh is set to 1 with the deviation factor of 0 0.1 and minimum size factor of 0 0.1. So by changing this one value to something like 0 0.1, you can have the specimen be meshed with much finer meshes. So uh, the mesh is set let's go to property and we are going to have um, aluminum the density I think is 2.7 oh okay uh, is 2.7 times minus 9 I'm using the ton system ton per millimeter uh, square uh, or cubic millimeter and I'm going to have elasticity module is going to be what uh, 69 or 70 gigapascal so it's going to be 69.9 e power 3 position ratio of 0 0.33 and I'm going to use plasticity um, plastic and here I'm going to select Johnson cook hardening function this value I needed to I need to basically cheat so <clears throat> um, where is it I think the A value is 95 point something uh, it's not really good to have this one moving so it's going to be 95.7497 and this value was 0 0.4 I think yeah so this one is 0 0.44 um, these numbers are for the Johnson Cook uh, calculation that we had. I want to add 78.0.588. Okay, I'm going to add this value. So 
something like this. Uh, since we didn't have any information when we set up this uh, Johnson Cook function about the temperature, so the uh, temperature coefficient should be zero, transition temperature and everything, I'm going to assign it to, um, to be zero. So uh, this property is created. We are going to create a section. It's going to be aluminum section. Uh, it's going to be solid, homogeneous, and we are going to have this material and this section is created we are going to assign the section to the whole um, specimen so the specimen is now turned uh, green which shows that it has the property and we are going to name it to for example uh, aluminum section okay so the property is created now we want to create the assembly and if i save it again and go to the journal file you can see that the property can be seen here the density is here the elastic modulus and all the information is uh, here that you need to create the model again if you want to so um, I'm going to go to the assembly bring all this specimen back and I want to have another surface again okay so now I have two surfaces and one specimen I want to place them at their exact position this one is going to be the uh, top specimen um, top surface sorry and I want to I want it to be replaced here and this one yeah the location is good uh, again select this one select the reference point and move the specimen move the whole model So that I can select uh, the bottom position. Okay, so that's it. So uh, if you go to the assembly default and show the parts, it, it will show you much better how the specimen and the geometry look like after the assembly. So let's go to step. We want to create a dynamic explicit st step. So dynamic explicit we don't change anything here uh, the time period is reasonable if you wanted to do a kind of <clears throat> strain rate um, studies we can play with it but now it's okay um, I'm not going to add uh, yeah let's let's create a mass scaling because it will reduce the computational cost significantly so by 1000 uh, we are not really concerned about the answer of what we are getting here so I, I don't care about it I just prefer to the uh, basic model to finish sooner so I'm adding a mass scaling and in the field output request you can see that lots of things uh, is added here we don't want all this information um, for the purpose of this tutorial so I'm going to remove some of them you can remove them from here or you can just deselect them from here for example we don't have any void or Eulerian par parts so we don't need those information uh, we just need the uh, reaction forces, displacement should be fine. We don't need the acceleration. Um, we don't need the Eulerian related information at all. Um, again, we don't need these parts. Okay, and you can change the intervals to whatever you want. It's going to just uh, affect the um, output file basically. So this is the step and field output request, the interaction. Um, let's create the contact interaction. And we're going to have tangential behavior penalty. And as I told you, I'm going to use a simple 0.1 as the coefficient of friction. We want to create this general contact. And all with self is selected, which is just fine. And the property is assigned to the interaction. So we need to have boundary condition. Again, create um, symmetry in caster, and I'm going to name it bottom fix. Um, okay, so we want to assign the reference point to this boundary condition, and we are going to assign it and uh, set it in caster. And this one was created in the step one. It doesn't make any difference, but I prefer it to be uh, from the initial step. And then the top one is going to be displacement. And we are going to assign it to this reference point. 
and we have a 50% reduction in height. Our initial height was 15, so it's going to be minus 7.5 and in along the y direction. And it doesn't accept if I just click on it right now, so I need to have an amplitude. Let's create an amplitude. I prefer to use smooth step amplitude. So something like from 0 to 0 and from 1 to 1 should be simple enough for this purpose. So it's created in this step. Now the load is created, the mesh is created, and the job can be uh, basically created, hopefully without an error. Um, I'm going to use only four processors in order to solve um, this problem. So once I save it, you can see that all the other steps that I did is created inside this journal file. So by manipulating this journal file, I can create different uh, files that again, I can call them and ask Abacus to run to create and run those uh, files and jobs for me. So I need to take a look at the uh, basically job to see if we have any kind of error or something. But in the meantime, once, um, okay, so I don't need this uh, other um, cheat file or information that I wanted to have. Instead, I want to um, just copy and paste all this information into another file. So this comes with uh, to, to the part that uh, basically we are creating the uh, Python script for Abax scripting. So as you can see here, my sublime is set to have the syntax for the Python, as you can see just right here. So all the information and all the syntaxes is in Python now. Uh, first of all, I'm going to have something uh, like this as my guide. And this part basically create specimens all specimens um, this part I know that is going to create the specimen and up to here is assigning the reference point as I can remember and you can you can understand it after a while this is the reference point so I'm um, assigning oops I'm assigning a reference point here um, you can remove all these uh, interval uh, or, or again calling the from part import and this kind of thing because at the beginning of the, this uh, file you have those information so you don't necessarily need to have them um, sorry so here again um, I'm going to have another information so here what we did well did we do we I think uh, created the yeah mesh the specimen Okay, so this was, uh, basically what I'm doing is that I'm changing this file so that I can go uh, or track back and go to the location that I want much easier in the future. So this one was the mesh and again after the mesh, this is the generate mesh. So here the mesh was created and here uh, what we did, we assigned the material property. So we created the material property. This is the section, middle surface, something. Uh, what is it? Uh, I don't think it's. Oh, OK. We created the set as well here. I'm not really sure. So let's go forward. Um, this is the instance. So this is the assembly part. You can understand all of them, but I don't want to spend time understanding what which part is which right now. So here, for example, we created the mass scaling. You can see the mass scaling that I created. This is the dynamic explicit step. So this is the finishes of the assembly. So I can create the, for example, this one was the step part. 
and this is the field that was request um, here uh, the, the lines at the bottom is going to be the interactions um, after the interaction we use isotropic uh, interaction and assign this interaction then we have the global and self we can see these kind of keywords here you can understand these commands but you don't need to understand and learn how to do it because abacus is going to do it for you so there is no really need to do it um, <clears throat> so here we are assigning the boundary conditions um, and after that we are going to have the displacement which was seven point okay so this is the 7.5 uh, this is the displacement that I wanted so if you want to change the displacement you can change this part and after that we were uh, basically uh, submitting the job so creating uh, submitting the job so that's all um, if you save this file as a Python file, you can easily um, call it and um, basically ask Abacus to run this model for you. Um, so yeah, so save as the job is running, uh, but I want it to be created as let's see, simple compression test. And I'm going to have Python file at the end, save. And this is going to be the Python file that whenever I call it in the uh, script, run a script part of Abacus, as you can see, file here, run script. If I use here, I can call this uh, simple compression test, and it's going to create all these information for me and redo this test. And if I manipulate this part, if I manipulate any part of this file, I can create different models. Um, what I did in my MATLAB file, and I can just um, basically comment, uh, make this part a comment so that uh, it doesn't run, but create the job. Um, you can create all the information, you can change all this information, change the number of CPUs from here, assign how many percentage of the memory to this model and so on and so forth. You can uh, basically execute a Python file at the very beginning. Um, here, um, I usually have another section like uh, setting up so, or something like this. So if I execute file, uh, uh, I forgot the exact comment. Execute file, something like this. No, it's not. Okay. Um, okay, I can I can take a look at it, but I don't want to go through all my Python files. Um, let's pick something. Okay, so scripting. Okay. No, that's not it. This is the tensile journal file that I had before. So this is the part, the model that I'm working on right now. It's simulating the EHF process. So this is the thing that I'm doing. So at the beginning of it, I have the habit of adding this line, which is not really doing anything, but uh, I prefer to have it in all of my Python files just in case I want to manipulate anything. And I have this, uh, you can have a execute file and then assign a name to it and have this Python file somewhere, change any parameters inside this Python file, and then by running this big Python file or create run uh, um, or simple compression test Python file, at the beginning of it, it's going to read this Python file, and if any parameters is changed here, you can change them. Uh, you can basically, um, uh, basically run the model based on those values. So I'm going to make it simple for now. Uh, this is the simulation variable file that I have. So let's uh, change something here. Uh, let's change the, um, okay, so sorry. I'm going to find one. I want to change the mesh size. This is the simplest thing that I can show you right now. So this is the mesh size that I had. Okay, I'm going to change it to mesh size. 
okay I'm going to have this variable um, where else did I have it okay so that was for the uh, surface this one is for the uh, for the, speci the specimen so I can have it may size equal to 0 0.5 or for the purpose of showing you how does it look I'm going to assign it to 0 0.25 or something like this so if I run this Python file at the beginning, it's going to assign a variable name mesh size to 0 0.25. And whenever it's here, uh, says that sees the mesh size is going to assign this uh, 0 0.25. So it's going to be changed. Um, again, I could do this one inside the, uh, another Python file call, called simvar.python file. So uh, this is my method of changing parameters between MATLAB and Abacus. But the simplest model is shown here, basically. The other thing that I want to change, for example, is that the amount of displacement, for example. So let's see, uh, this one is minus uh, 7.5. I'm going to say minus one times displacement value, something like this. Um, and at the beginning, it was 7.5. Now I want to say it to only five. Okay, so I'm going to save it. <clears throat> So first of all, let's see what's going on inside this. Okay, it's almost done probably. Um, I really don't understand why do we need uh, eight points value for all the uh, viewpoint viewport annotations I wish that I could f easily do it and change these values you can you can change the environmental val uh, variables in abacus so that all these values changed easily so uh, by cutting the specimen I can take a look at the inside part uh, as you can see the mesh is really coarse mesh and we don't see um, reasonable results probably but um, it's reasonable enough to see that the model is working and uh, but the mesh is huge and we are having some some difficulties here anyway uh, <clears throat> the model is working right now and uh, I'm going to just kill the job so that I can show you the script um, I'm going to run this script this was the uh, example journal file I'm not going to um, change it because I want to share it with you uh, but I want to create another model save everything to the example yeah why not so if I save it again what it does it's going to add lots of lines really unnecessary lines which is going to be uh, the job section which we are not really interested in uh, right now so this is a new model as you can see here we don't have any part but once I run the script this script it's going to basically create everything in a matter of seconds and it is going to create the part with the name that we have assigned before uh, it's going to create the assembly it's going to mesh them perfectly with the size that I have uh, chosen before and if we go to the boundary condition because we've changed this parameter we can see that there is a 5 instead of 7.5 here by changing these values you can change everything inside your model much easier uh, than the input file um, and basically you can um, script whatever is needed in Abacus you can create sets or whatever basically in this model so that being said I want to say that in the visualization part in the visualization part you can again do the scripting but uh, it's going to take some time to go through it but you need to instead of changing the journal file that we have changed in order to script the model you need to change some parameters or copy and paste some information from this RPY file uh, if you take a look at it, you can see again you have similar patterns of changing things and saving things here. Um, 
so basically you can copy and paste some section of it in your output uh, script and do the scripting on uh, that file as well so whatever I did over there is going to be shown here if you remember I changed the viewpoint um, viewport annotation um, um, in my visualization and assigned 14 um, size of the points as uh, the text so you can see that what I did is going to be uh, assigned here so it said viewport annotation set values to this for the uh, legend for the title for the state and for whatever it's it's here so uh, once I did the uh, basically the uh, use uh, cut the specimen to see inside again another part is going to be uh, changed here I think it's view cut on so by having these two in your output file or in your create and run file uh, you can have the basically visualization scripted as well so yeah i'm going to save all this information inside my website so that you can take a look at it whenever you want or download them um, i don't have huge amount of uh, size in my home page so i'm going to show, um, show you a link over there and i'm going to uh, set all this information i mean save all the info this information in my uh, dropbox in the public folder so you can take a look at it i hope that it was useful for you thank you for your time and have a good time.